Oregon going to be on the road going to the big house. It's a Big 12, or excuse me, not Big 12. Uh, Freudian sleep there. Big 10 matchup. Hello. The boys in blue hosting the boys in green. And this is one of those, Mason, where Oregon's got to load up. They got to load up the old PJ, right? And they got to go all the way across the country. And that's a long trip, and that's a big deal, and blah, blah, blah. I don't think it makes a darn bit of difference here, Mason. I don't think it makes a darn bit of difference. I can't find really a huge edge for Michigan in this football game. Let me kind of get into it here. This Michigan offense, we all know what it's been this year, guys. It's It's been a bit of a disaster. Lots of guys left this program going to the NFL. Coaches left going to the NFL. And it's created a vacuum. And, you know, Sharon Moore was left to just kind of pick up the pieces here for Michigan. This past week, they were able to beat Michigan State, but only had 265 total yards in the game, man. I mean, uh, I, they're averaging 21.5 points per game this year. That's 111th in the country. They are averaging 173 y- rush yards per game. That's 52nd in the country. So they are able to run the ball somewhat effectively and somewhat efficiently uh, is Michigan. Um, we saw Davis Warren this past week. So we, the, the quarterback, Hokey Pokey, is alive and well out there in Ann Arbor. We've seen three different quarterbacks this season for Michigan. So which one are we going to see this week? Take your pick. I don't know how much it matters because this offense isn't really geared towards passing right this second anyway. Um, but the strength of the team definitely lies on the defense, I would say. The 15th best rushing defense in the country, 86th best, best passing defense in the country, and that factors out to the 38th total defense as far as yards given up total per game. Um, so not a bad defense overall for Michigan. It's not horrible. The passing st- defensive statistics have actually gotten better as the years went on. Uh, we saw at the beginning of the season a little bit of, uh, of Michigan being susceptible to the pass just a bit. And they, they've kind of fixed that a little bit. But as they fix that, teams have been able to run the ball more on them, which is kind of odd. Uh, we've seen over the last couple of weeks, we've seen Illinois. Illinois almost ran for 200 yards on this Michigan defense. Um, so we, we've seen some teams be able to, to run the ball a little bit more here lately. Michigan State won the overall rushing battle this past week. Um, and, and so I'm interested to see which Michigan we get out there. and. My real concern about this game at all for Oregon, which I'm not concerned for Oregon losing the game necessarily, but one thing that I think could factor in to making this game a little bit closer is the fact that I'm not in love with Oregon's ability to run the football at this point this season. Um, 61st rushing offense, it's not the strength of this offense at this point. So I think Michigan is going to be able to hold Oregon at bay running the football for the most part. I don't think I don't think this is a situation where Oregon just runs wild running the football. And then, like I said, over the last couple of weeks, we've seen the passing defense get better for Michigan. And so we, we, I'm a little bit concerned with how Oregon is going to attack this thing offensively. Um, already had trouble running the football. Dylan Gabriel has been susceptible to throwing some interceptions too, Mason. And so I'm interested to see that if if Michigan can make Oregon one-dimensional in this football game by taking the runaway, are they being able to sit back and maybe get an interception or two? That's the only way Michigan has a chance to win this football game, by the way. They're going to have to get a turnover or two. They're going to have to take something away from Oregon. Easier said than done. This Oregon offense, 24th scoring offense in the country. I told you 61st in the country rushing offense, but the 12th best passing offense in the country. They've got a lot of yards through the air. Um, And then defensively, not a whole lot you can pick on there. The 41st rushing defense in the country would be the lowest mark for this uh, defense, but the 12th total defense and 16th best passing defense in the country. It's all going to come down to what Michigan can take away defensively. And are they able to take the football away defensively from Oregon? I don't think it's going to be enough, man. Um, But with this thing being at 14 and a half, um, I I think the right play on this one is actually Michigan plus the 14 and a half, Mason. Um, I think that's actually the correct play. But I'm scared to play it, man, because I I just think that, that Oregon is such a sound football team 
We've seen them be very versatile. We've seen them win in different ways. Wh- what way are we going to see them be able to come out and win this week? That's what I'm most interested to see. And then furthermore, Michigan's offense against this Oregon defense, how are they going to score? Uh, what are your thoughts on this one? Well, I'm kind of with you. I'm anxious to see what Michigan is going to be able to conjure up um, running the football uh, against Oregon. That's been um, really good uh, against the run um, and playing better as the season's gone on, On really on both sides of the football. I've been really impressed with um, their trajectory as they, you know, when you look at when you look at teams around the country, right, Oregon gets the big win over Ohio State. You know, prior to that, we had questions about Oregon and whether or not they would be up for that football game. A lot of people were picking Ohio State in that football game. Um, But we've seen Oregon get better week over week. When they made the offensive line changes, that's really when we saw the offense take off. Um, But then defensively, too, it seems like they're playing better on the back end. That was a huge question mark. Teams were able to run the football really well. Um, You know, Boise State was able to run the football really well, which which isn't really a knock on uh, Oregon's uh, rush defense necessarily. But even since then, it seems like the defense is is really starting to click. So I don't know if um, and obviously running the football has been Michigan's strong suit. Um, but they haven't done a great job of that either. I mean, like you said, they're 52nd in the country with 172 yards per game. Um, I, I would not expect them to get to that mark. Uh, this, this is a much better defense than they've faced up front all season long. And, um, to me, if they're not running the football, how are they going to pass the football? Right. We saw Davis Warren step in last week and he had a really good game. Um, he ended up, uh, with a, I think like a one, 140 passer rating, 140.2 there, um, average 6.5 yards per attempt, um, you know, 13 completions on 19 attempts, just 123 yards, but at 68% completion percentage, that's, that's probably the best passing performance we've seen by a Michigan quarterback all season (laughs) long going up against, uh, a Michigan state defense that is really good. Um, but I don't, I still don't feel like. Michigan has an identity on offense. I think they're still trying to figure that out. I don't know if they're going to figure it out all season long, and and this isn't exactly the game for Michigan to come in and get right. Right, this this is a tough defense, uh, tough team to play to to play just in general, considering you know they're the number one team in the country and, and really surging. So, as as every other team in America is getting better. Um, as the season goes on, Oregon seems to be doing it at a faster rate than other teams, and that's why they're the number one team in the country right now. Um, when I look at Oregon's attack in, in, or, or offensive attack in this game, I, I do think that there are um, potential. There, there is potential to attack the secondary for Michigan. Will Rod, or uh, Will Johnson was out. Uh, last week against Michigan State. What is his status with a lower body injury? Uh, What is his status in this football game? Um, Does he want to come back? I mean, this is a a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Does he want to come back and play, or is he going to hang it up as the season seems to be hung up for Michigan? Um, You know, not not saying he's quitting. I have no no idea what what the young man's going to do. But um, at this point, he's, he's probably considering his health more so than playing football and, and winning football for the Wolverines. So uh, to me, I think that this is a, another another uh, opportunity, I guess, for the Oregon offense to go up against a, a still a good defense in Michigan and see what they, what they can do because they're going to see more defenses similar to Michigan's as the season goes on. Um, I, I do feel like Oregon should be able to uh, lean on their defense to hold Michigan to really less than 20 points. I, I, I think you feel pretty confident in saying that. So can Oregon go out and, and push the envelope on offense, try some things out, uh, similar to what we saw late in the Illinois game, but but hopefully if you're an Oregon fan, be able to put up more points in the second half um, and just through, throughout the game in general. But I think that this is a this is a game where Oregon is going to want to see what the offensive line can do up front against a stout Michigan defensive front. Um, you know, maybe they can establish the line of scrimmage and run the football a little bit better, get some confidence built up uh, going into the end of the season. Um, but offensively, I feel like I, I give the edge to Oregon 
defensively, I'd definitely give the edge to Oregon. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the defense ends up coming away with a score in this one. Uh, I, I think – I don't like that it's at 14 and a half. I, I really wish I could get this – either at 14 or 13 and a half, you know, somewhere under two touchdowns would be fantastic. So it makes me a little bit weary to, to bet on this one. But if, if you, if I had to bet and I probably won't uh, on this game, I think that Oregon would cover uh, the spread here at 14 and a half. I think that they can win by 17. The only thing giving me pause is the fact that they got to travel all the way across country, which we've seen teams in the big 10 in particular struggle with that. Um, I feel like the home home field or the, the home team in these matchups where um, the team is, is traveling across country tends to cover, if not win the game outright. So to me, um, I would stay away from this from a betting perspective, but I think Oregon wins comfort, comfortably uh, regardless of what the final outcome is. Yeah, I do too. My thing is Vegas put that half a point on there for one reason or another. And it makes me think that they feel really good about a 14-point spread on this one, right? And, and they're putting that half in there to trip everybody up. 